Hi everybody and welcome to Adam's Gaming Room. This is a new channel where I plan to show off some of my collection and maybe give the occasional review. My father and I have a lot of rare collectible items, so if you're into Nintendo, PlayStation, Xbox, Star Wars, Ninja Turtles, anything collectible, just make sure you hit that subscribe button because plenty of items are on the way. Also, check out the games in the background, and if you have any good memories playing them growing up as a kid, or if you found any cheap out in the wild, I'd like to know. I love hearing stories about where people find rare games, and they basically give nothing for them. So, we bought this lighted PS1 store sign on eBay. It's 36 inches wide and 8 and a quarter inches tall. They used to be in stores like Toys R Us, Walmart, Kmart, things like that back in the mid to late 90s. If you look at the back, you'll see the Sony sticker, along as information from the manufacturer Everbright. They're the same company that made the PS2 neon sign. When buying these store displays, I always like to get a picture of the back because a lot of times when they reproduce them, they won't put the sticker because they're more concerned about the way the front looks. It's just kind of like a fail safe for me. I'm sure they'll get to where they're fixing the stickers to look like original, but we're not to that point yet. We weren't planning on filming until the restoration was already underway, but we got some video of it and we'll go step by step and tell you exactly what you need to get the job done. So... Here's what you need. You're going to need three items. Blue Magic Metal Polish Cream. You're going to need this 3M Trizac 3000 grit sandpaper and a microfiber cloth. This runs about 14 bucks. This is about six bucks a sheet on eBay and any microfiber cloth will do. Just make sure it's clean as you you don't want to rub any more scratches into it. If you look closely, you will notice that it has a clear plastic acrylic-like film over the graphics. This will allow you to sand and buff without fear of damaging the sign. What you want to do is start in a small cornered area for practice. You want to get the sandpaper, wet it, and start sanding on a damaged area, and feel free to apply moderate pressure, just don't press so hard you warp the sign or something. After that, you want to dry the area with a microfiber cloth, then get a, another piece of sandpaper that's dry, and you want to dry sand the same area. The amount of sanding required will depend on the deepness of the scratches. Now, after this, you want to wipe the area off with a microfiber cloth, and then start to scrub it with the metal polish. You want to do so until there isn't any residue left. And then you want to get a clean microfiber cloth and rub. Just keep on rubbing until you're satisfied with the shininess. If you are willing to take the time, you can get, all, you can get out almost all the scratches. It just depends on how good you want it to look. We got about 80 to 95% of ours out in over, well, in just under an hour. There's just one more problem. The sign uses fluorescent light, so I decided to put a Go V Home RGBIC strip in it. And they cost around $25 and will greatly enhance the visuals and look of the sign. There is a hole in the back which will allow you to insert the strip without having to drill. Then you want to run it around the outline of the frame and make sure you leave plenty of room for the plastic slip to get back in. The RGB strip adds a level of customization that is staggering. Enjoy this short montage of the sign and my cabinets changing colors. If this helped you out in any way, smash that like button and make sure to subscribe to see more gaming and collectible content. I have an authentic rare World of Nintendo neon sign coming in the mail tomorrow. I'm going to do an unboxing video and let's just hope it arrives undamaged. Anyway, thanks for watching. Add a melt.